an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about functional anatomy. We're going to carry on with the lessons about functional anatomy. Today we're going to talk about the traps, and the traps are a little bit bigger than what we oftentimes think of when we think about the traps. We usually think about the upper traps. And man, when I was in college and high school, there was a wrestler named Bill Goldberg. And I don't think we called the traps the traps for, I don't know, ages. We just kept saying, we got to work those Goldberg muscles. And we would work our upper traps, the traps kind of between the shoulders and the head, working out our Goldberg muscles. And then I I learned a lot more about anatomy and found out that there were more parts of the traps. Those are just the upper traps. There's also middle trap and there are also lower traps. So let's get into talking about the trapezius muscle. And the trapezius muscle, I, I love the etymology. So trapezius comes from the Greek word trapezon, which means irregular quadrilateral, crooked square. And this irregular quadrilateral, if you think of it, it we are, the, the trap's kind of shaped like a diamond. It goes from the base of the skull out to the shoulder blades, and then it makes a diamond point down into the lower trap. So let's go through the attachment points, and then we'll go into the joint actions, and we'll talk about what joint actions they're in. So let's go with the upper traps first. Here we go, upper traps. There is a bony notch called the external occipital protuberance. One of my favorite things in anatomy to actually say, the external occipital protuberance. So the back of the head, the back of the skull is the occiput and there is a bony notch. So if you go right to there, right to the back of the skull, there is a little rounded bony notch at the base of the head. And that is the external occipital protuberance. There's also the nuchal ligament and the nuchal ligament is at the base of the skull. And then there's also the spine of C7. So it runs through that nuchal ligament all the way down to the spine of C7. And then it moves from the middle at the base of the skull and from the spine out to the side at a, at a downward angle. And that little downward angle, it moves to the posterior lateral third of the clavicle. And then it adri- it attaches, uh, I mean, onto the scapula, and then it attaches to the uh, acromion process, which is this little flat bony notch right there at the shoulder. And so when that contracts, the upper traps contract, it pulls your shoulders up towards your head. But here's something we see at the gym a lot. It's not just that the shoulders move towards the head, it can also go through spinal extension or cervical extension. So when you see people with heavy weights and they cannot lift those heavy weights, so what they do instead is they extend and they jut their head forward and they bring the base of their skull, the posterior skull, closer to the shoulder. So instead of bringing the shoulders closer to the skull, they bring the skull closer to the shoulders. And that is a way of, yes, are they shortening the traps? Yeah, they are. But unless maybe you stick a dumbbell on their chin, then it's not actually doing any work for the traps. Not a suggestion, don't put a dumbbell on your chin. I'm just saying that in order for this kind of nutation of the skull to work, in order to work your traps, you'd have to load the other side. So it'd have to be on your face somehow. What you could rather do is lighten the weights. I know, I know, that's a, that's challenging. That's a tricky one. But lighten the weights 
and move through a big range of motion, keeping the chin in a neutral position. So that way, there's your joint actions. We've got elevation of the scapula. It can do extension of the cervical spine. It can do upward rotation of the scapula. So upward rotation, if my hands right now, for those of you watching, my hands represent the scapula. As my arms go up, the scapula go into upward rotation. So what happens based on origin and insertion, it goes from the, the cervical spine, the base of the head, the external occipital protuberance, and it runs down to the lateral border of the scapula. So when it activates, it pulls this way. It pulls into upward rotation. The upper traps can also assist with retraction. It does retraction, pulls the shoulder blades back. But now let's get into a couple of little interesting things. I like these because it can do something called um, contralateral rotation. So it does ipsilateral flexion. So if I'm my right trap, will side bend me to the right side. But my right trap will also rotate my head to the left side. So as I drop my ear, my right ear to my shoulder, my upper trap can contribute to that. And if I rotate my chin towards my left shoulder, my upper trap can uh, contribute to that. That's the contralateral rotation. It's ipsilateral flexion. Well, what if I want to stretch my upper trap? I got to take everything I just learned. I got to go opposite of it. I need to be depressed in my scapula. I could even probably protract a little bit, make sure that I'm downward rotated at my scapula so my arms are down. And then I want to side bend away from my right trap. So I'm side bending away. It's contralateral flexion and then ipsilateral rotation. So that way, and then keep the chin in a tucked position. Oh, I feel it. I feel it when I go through those motions. So that is the upper trap. The upper trap is a significant contributor to a lot of movement. And sometimes when muscles can do a lot of things, they can become very active. And I think that's probably why so many people are like, oh, my shoulders. And when they say their shoulders, they're not talking about their shoulder joint. They're usually grabbing their traps, those upper traps and rubbing it and squeezing it. And, you know, could you, could you rub my shoulders for a moment? And they're usually talking about the upper traps. They say, oh, I keep all of my, uh, my tension in my shoulders and usually again re referencing their upper traps. So maybe getting into knowing what the upper traps do concentrically and then doing the opposite of that in that eccentric or that stretched phase and stretch that muscle out a little bit. See if that helps to minimize the overactivity. Providing that to your clients who do complain about their upper traps quite a bit might be a very good addition to their take-home program or their prep program before they get started, uh, even going to work, it might be helpful. Well, then we also have the two other portion of the traps. We have the middle traps and we have the lower traps. Now, the middle traps will go from the spinous process of C7 down to T4. So C is cervical, T is thoracic. We talk about that at just what number vertebrae are they? So from C7 to T4, and then it goes all the way over to the acromion process, and then the superior spine of the scapula. So the spine of the scapula, if you just reach your hand back onto your shoulder blade and you feel that bony notch running across the back of the shoulder blade, that's the spine of the scapula. When we talked about the rotator cuff, we talked about the supraspinatus and infraspinatus of the spine of the scapula. So is it above the spine, supraspinatus, or is it below the spine of the scapula, infraspinatus? Well, the lower, tra the mid traps go to the superior spine of the scapula. So just above the spine of the scapula. And here's what they do. One job, not like the upper trap. It's like 15 jobs that it can do. It's got one job, retraction. Well, the Upper traps can do retraction too, but the middle traps, they don't assist with upward rotation. They don't assist with downward rotation. They retract, but they have another very important job. They decelerate 
protraction. And talk about your clients. The clients that are in protraction, they have forward shoulders. They are in an internally rotated position at their rotator cuff. They're pro, uh, they're forward in their position with their shoulders. The middle traps are very important to help decelerate and to prevent protraction because they are retractors. But let me tell you something else because this one I found to be really interesting. On two occasions uh, in my life where I started taking up uh, maybe a, a lot more boxing. And so it, I was new to it twice. And I would start boxing and I would finish a day of boxing for like two days later, I would be sore in between my shoulder blades. And it made no sense to me. Why would I be sore in between my shoulder blades? Because I'm not like, swinging back. I'm not elbowing people behind me where I'm retracting. Why am I feeling so much tightness in my mid traps? And then I realized it is usually the deceleration of force that tends to cause more soreness. And so as I punched and I protracted forward, then my middle traps would decelerate how fast I protracted. And that would then stimulate those muscles and then, uh, you know, jumping right into a class that I wasn't used to and going hard in the paint. Because if I'm going to jump into a boxing class, I'm going all out. Uh, I was sore in between my shoulder blades because my mid traps were decelerating pro traction, not because I was actively retracting. But what did they do concentrically in the scapulothoracic joint? They create retraction. They decelerate protraction. And now we're left, left with one final muscle. It is the, well, portion of a muscle. It's all, all the traps, but the lower traps have different joint actions as well. Now, if we look at the joint actions on the lower traps, you'll also see that, that retraction is part of what their job is. So upper, middle, lower trap, the entire trapezius complex, they all assist with retraction, bringing the shoulder blades together. But here's something I thought was really interesting. The upper traps do upward rotation, and so do the lower traps. And that one was a little mind-boggling for a little bit, because uh, I, I know like upper traps do elevation. They shrug, and the lower traps depress. So the upper traps do one joint action. The lower traps do the opposing joint action. Elevation, upper traps, depression, lower traps. Get it. But why, why, oh, why do the upper traps do upward rotation and the lower traps do upward rotation? How does that work? And it's really based on, again, its origin and insertion. If you look at the lower traps, it's going to be the spinous process of T5 through T12. So all the thoracic spine from, from the fifth vertebrae all the way down to the last thoracic vertebrae. And then it goes to the superior spine of the scapula. And because it goes to the superior spine, so it goes along the medial border of the scapula and kind of wraps around and grabs on top of the spine of the scapula. So as it pulls down, it actually rotates the scapula up. And of course, the upper trap goes onto the lateral border of the scapula and it will rotate the scapula up. So both of these muscles do upward rotation of the scapula. So let's just do a quick run through again on what the joint actions are for each of these muscles. Here we go, upper traps. It will do elevation, scapular elevation, upward rotation, retraction, cervical extension, cervical ipsilateral flexion, and cervical contralateral rotation. That's what it does concentrically. Now. The mid traps, retraction, that's it. They do retraction. And then the lower traps will do depression, upward rotation of the scapula, and retraction of the scapula. Those are the joint actions of the trapezius muscles. If you have questions, please reach out. Let me know. I appreciate you tuning into this, learning a little bit more about the traps, or just doing a little refresher anatomy course, a little functional anatomy refresher course. I always appreciate that. If you have questions for me, you can reach out to me at dr.rickrichie, or you can email me at rick.richie, R-I-C-H-E-Y, at nasm.org. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.